Good day. Welcome. This is your Daily Med with Lady V. Grace and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Today as we continue to talk about Jesus asking God the Father to restore to him his position of glory. As we looked earlier in St. John chapter 17 verse 1 through 5, we will conclude that lesson today. What we see from what Jesus Christ did when he came upon the face of the earth in his first advent, that he did all to bring glory to God. Even the crucifixion, as terrible as it was, it was designed to give God the glory. So for us as people of God, Colossians chapter 3 and verse 17 tells us that whatsoever we do in word or in deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. And Jesus set that perfect example for us as his followers that whatsoever we do, we would give glory to God. So in verse 5 of St. John chapter 17, Jesus says, And now, O Father, glorify me, together with yourself, with the glory which I had with you before the world began. He says, Father, I was alongside you. We are equal in power and in majesty. And I didn't see that equality as one I couldn't put aside. But I put it aside just to go to earth to die so that the human race, lost humanity, could be free from sin. And this took him to the cross. It took him to the place where he was crucified. But as we say, the crucifixion brought glory to the Father. How did it glorify the Father? It glorified his wisdom. It glorified his faithfulness. It glorified his truthfulness. It glorified his holiness and his love. It showed him wise because he is the only wise God, the all knowing God. He doesn't do things on trial and error, but he is wise in providing a plan whereby he could be just and yet be the justifier. And he does that all because he wants to save the ungodly. It showed him faithful in keeping his promise that the seed of the woman in Genesis chapter 3 and verse 15 would bruise the head of the serpent. It showed him truthful because he's not like man that he should lie nor like the son of man that he should repent. So it showed him to be faithful in carrying out that which he has promised. It showed him holy because he is a holy God. Showed him holy in requiring what the laws demands to be satisfied and our great Savior and substitute Jesus Christ did that. 
he supplied what the Lord demands. We of ourselves could not satisfy what the Lord demands. We sing often from the song, could my tears forever flow? Could my zeal no languish no? These for sin could not atone. Only Christ can save and Christ alone. Therefore, when the sinner comes clinging to that cross, Jesus Christ will save such a lost sinner. So we know it also shows God's love. It is his love that caused him to provide Jesus Christ as a mediator and a redeemer for us. A friend to sinful man as his eternal son. He says, look, this is my eternal son. These sinful people, evil in their ways, but if they'll only accept him, then he will become their friend. And we truly say, what a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and our griefs to bear. It's a privilege that we have that we can take everything to him in prayer. We often sing again, what a friend, what a precious friend. So complete, so divine. If we walk this whole world over, not another friend like Jesus we can find. So we know that the crucifixion brought glory to the Son. It glorified his compassion. As Lamentations chapter 3 and 22 tells us, new every day we see him having compassion. When he goes out and he sees the masses of people who followed him, who want to hear the word of God, he says, I see them with sheep as sheep without shepherd, and my compassion goes out towards them. So we know in dying for us and suffering the way that he did in our stead allows him to exhibit, to show such love and compassion for us. He was counted sin and he took the curse upon himself. He bought our redemption with the price of his own life. And we sing, I will sing of my Redeemer. And his wondrous love to me. Oh, my lost estate to save. In his boundless love and mercy. He, the ransom, freely gave. I will sing of my Redeemer. And his wondrous love to me. On the cross he suffered from the curse to set me free. He says, sing, oh, sing of my Redeemer. With his blood, he purchased me. On the cross, he sealed my pardon, paid the debt, and make me free. So we know Jesus Christ was the one who paid the price. And that price was his life, his own blood that he shed. It showed him most patient. When they wanted to make him a king, he says, no, no, it is not this time. My first advent is to seek and to save those who are lost. He did not die an ordinary death lying in a bed getting uh, sick as it were 
but we know the agony and the pain our minds can't even conceive it what jesus went through jesus has the power and he could have called ten thousands of angels to destroy the whole earth so that he could go free but he did not so the crucifixion showed him most powerful in bearing the weight of all our transgressions the transgressions of the whole world and guess what he did this so that he could vanquish satan and disposing him of his prey we were his praise but thank god jesus christ made the ultimate sacrifice by dying on the cross of calvary for our sins and yes he was glorified in what he did and god the father was glorified and so on the third day as he promised he raised jesus from the dead now jesus is no longer on earth in his first advent no longer in the grave but has been ascended to the father's right hand where he is our mediator where he pleads and he makes intercession for us and yes the glorification of jesus christ is that he died willingly obediently laying down his life as a sacrifice and this pleased the father and now he is saying i'm coming back to you father for that place that position that i had that place of glory with you in heaven at your right hand god bless you thank you again for watching please subscribe please like also share and comment and don't forget to visit my youtube channel daily med with link